Good morning, dear saints. It's good to have you uh, with me today. Uh, this is our continuation of our uh, devotions uh, for Holy Week. Uh, today, I'll be sharing the Gospel of, of uh, Mark. We'll be in chapter 14. Today, we'll read verses 12 through, through 31. Uh, the psalm we will read out of our treasury of daily prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, dear saints, we... we uh, begin our reading today for Holy Thursday, Maundy Thursday, with our psalm. This is uh, Psalm 37, 1 through 7. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers. For they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices." And so our gospel reading for today, we read from the gospel of Mark beginning at verse 12. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent and he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room? Where may I eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. There prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful, and to say to him one after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said emphatically, If I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. This is the word of the Lord. This night, 
Dear saints, this night of night, this is the night where Jesus institutes his holy supper here with his disciples as the Passover begins. The perfect lamb was about to, was about to be sacrificed once for all for your sins and for my sins. And in the midst of this, he, he institutes his holy supper here. And today we have that we have that here as we continue in word and sacrament, we come and we partake of his of his body and blood. He is with us here every time we come and partake of this holy sacrament here at the altar. This is Jesus for you and me. This is Jesus forgiving our sins again. We hear that forgiveness of sins for this is the very reason why he died upon that cross to secure our salvation there but but in that in that holy sacrament dear saints there it is that we are assured once again that he has forgiven us he continues to forgive us of our sins of course the other part of this that we read here in in mark's gospel is this account of of Peter's denial. Well, it's really not just Peter's denial as as Jesus says in here. He he talks of the scripture that um, was prophesied that God would strike the sheep and the uh, the, excuse me, God would strike the shepherd and the sheep would be scattered. All of them ran. All of them scattered uh, this night when Jesus was was betrayed. We know further that this night that Jesus goes there to the Mount of Olives where he prays to the Father and he he says, Lord, Father, let this cup pass from me. And he prays this three times, but he says, not my will, but yours be done. Praying his own prayer. Praying his own prayer there on the, on, in, in, in the garden the night before he is, he is going to be raised up for you and I where he prays that the will of the Father be done, the Son being obedient to the Father here, to the cross. Dear saints, what hope we have in this, secure hope that we have, knowing that Jesus did this for us, he's going to give himself for us, he willingly gives himself, so that as he, as he, as he follows Uh, The will of the Father, he goes to that cross to die for you and me. You know, in, in, uh, in these accounts, we find too that Jesus was sweating so profusely uh, here as he prayed in, in Gethsemane as well, that he was, uh, scripture tells us that he was, he was sweating drops of blood the, the, the stress and the enormity of realizing the humanity of Jesus here as he knows about uh, uh, what he's about to go through. But again, he does this. He could have called the whole thing off this night, this very night, before any of this even started. But he doesn't because he's, he's obedient to his father. To the promise that was that was made at the beginning of the of the, of the world, that Christ would come, that God would send someone to redeem us from our sins. And so we see that this is this is done for you and I. Shall we pray? We'll pray here in a moment. I don't want to forget this Lenten, the Lenten catechesis here because we've been talking about the sacrament of the Holy Supper. So I'm going to continue on. There's a paragraph here for, for today's reading that I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to uh, share with you. I'm looking down here at the bottom of page 173 in the Treasury of Daily Prayer if you're following along with me. And it says this. Having the true understanding and doctrine of the sacrament, 
there is also need for some admonition and encouragement, then people may not let such a great treasure, daily administered and distributed among Christians, pass by unnoticed. For we see that people seem weary and lazy about receiving the sacrament. They act as though they were such strong Christians that they have no need of it. Some pretend that it is a matter of liberty and not necessary. They pretend that it is enough to believe without it. For the most part, they go so far astray that they become quite brutish and finally despise both the sacrament and God's word. Well, dear saints, let's pray today that God would keep us, that he would continue to strengthen our faith and keep us grounded and steadfast in his word and, and in his sacrament. Holy Lord God, we come to you today and we thank you for all of your good gifts that you have for us. Oh Lord, we thank you that as we've been walking through our, uh, our uh, chronology this week of in the in the holy this holy week of all of the things that you um, uh, that you've been experiencing, ultimately leading to your cross. Oh Lord, we thank you that you did stay faithful to the Father. Um, and completing this divine plan for our salvation. O oh Lord, we ask that you would strengthen our faith and help us, O oh Lord, to remain steadfast in your word. And O oh Lord, to, to not despise the sacrament, but, oh, uh, but to come and hear your word and gladly partake of the sacrament uh, every opportunity that we have, O oh Lord, because we know that in that, in your word and in your sacrament there that we know once again that you've assured us that our sins are forgiven. And that medicine is what helps us, O oh Lord, and, and gives us the strength to, to carry on and to continue to live out our baptismal lives in this place. We pray this in your name and trusting in your promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend my body, my soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear saints, I'll see you again tomorrow.